That gives me something to sink to. All right. Uh, the one thing that, since Ben's in a hurry, that we won't have a whole lot of time to talk about, but what I wanted to talk about was the solis. The, uh, since you guys are essentially the string section, mm -hmm. I was hoping that you would agree on something that you would do whenever the solis occur, and there are 22 occurrences of that, the first of which is at roughly three minutes. Although in the, the time scale, it says, uh, the timeline, it says 9.3501, Andante and or Soli. So do you want to agree on anything, like uh, a motif that you could play, that you would then try to play in sync, or whatever? I mean, we don't have to do this now, but this is just one of the things that I was hoping to be able to get to today. Uh, uh, I think for simplicity, it'd be good to just maybe let's focus on a motif to go to just so that we yeah. can make pull it off yeah. right that's what there's, i was thinking an organizational part that's mostly i have to work on right that's what i need to practice so for us to sync up on anything would be a miracle <laughs> <laughs> well th another thing that i mentioned in my notes about the last rehearsal is that i think we need to respond to the cues that we're responding to within a second you know none of this like six seconds be while we think about what we're going to do you have to do it right away okay. uh so I would say, why don't you just pick motif one, yeah. since that's, it's the easiest thing to remember, is yeah. just do the very first motif and try to respond to it within the second at the appropriate tempo. Would that be every soli time, every time we see soli, or? Well, for right now, yes, okay. but uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. I mean, you might miss it, in which case, if, if you miss it, then whatever, you know, it's not really that important. I mean, there are 22 instances of it, and we'll just, roll with it and see how that works out. Otherwise, I don't really think there's anything else we need to discuss. Is that, has everybody got the SCORE movie up on their screens right now? Yep, I have the SCORE movie up. Okay. Now, will I need the, the time sheet? I would forget the time sheet because that really didn't okay. work out that well. I would just follow the SCORE. All the cues are in the film. Is yeah, all the cues are in the film and they're okay. all they all have definitions with them in case you don't remember all the terms. And another thing that I noticed is that the last time we played, I was responding to the easiest expression markings, you know, like ascending pitch, uh -huh. dramatic volume change, uh, held note, things like that. I think it's probably for, good for us to be conscious of how much we're doing the easy stuff and try to throw in something that maybe is a little bit more subtle or more difficult. Which, which is really, that's mainly addressed at me, Ben, and Eric right now, because I'm sure that we all did, uh, that, we all did that. And then the other thing is, is that um, the Bartok Pizzicato, I'm hoping that the, all the string players try to throw that in as much as possible whenever the uh, cue for it appears. And now I know the last time, Eric, you were saying you had a, a hard time doing the glissando, which is, uh, from uh, E to A, uh, so it's only, it's an octave and a fourth, but you can, of course, transpose it, so you could do it on your D string, for example, and go from D to G, if it makes it easier for you. Because okay. you were saying you had to do a crossover of strings, if I remember correctly. For the glissando? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's just, I'm, I was practicing on just going straight up the string. It just, it puts me in a position where I can't play another note without jumping but you know that's something i worked on a little bit we'll see how it goes okay well i just wanted to tell you that that if you wanted to just transpose it down a whole note if that made it easier for you to do an open d string up to the g then you could do that okay. the next thing to do is to put your cursor on the play button make sure that you have your uh your movie set at the zero marker so what i'm going to do is i'm going to count down three two one and then at zero you're gonna press the play button and that should hopefully make us only a fraction of a second off in sync. Yeah. Okay. Is, it, is that gonna work for everybody? Yep. yep. All right, is everybody ready? Yes. Okay. Three, two, one, play. And we play the motifs when they show up, otherwise we're silent during the, um, during the text beginning. Six and a half minutes of the text beginning has been taken out, so we're going to do it different than the way we did it the last time, except for the playing of the, of the motifs. And, and playing the motifs gets us to the tempo that's the average tempo, which is a little bit faster than what, uh, 
I was originally playing them in. And I'll probably fuck it up now, even. I'm giving the audience time here to actually read this text, although they have to read it really fast, so... Okay, here come the motifs. Thank <laughs> you. 
Suddenly it seemed like everybody was gelling in an interesting way. You know, there were times when, for example, the Prestissimo was amazing. Like there was a time when, for example, uh, Jeff came to the fore and he was playing Prestissimo and it was kind of like, oh my god, this thing's about ready to explode here or whatever. 
Then there were other times when we just were just trying to hang in there as much as possible. Yeah. And we're succeeding in hanging in there, but weren't necessarily congealing in the way that probably made it most interesting to listen to. Sure, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Well, that's why we're practicing. <laughs> What's that? Well, that's why we're practicing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not complaining. Believe no, me, I know. But I mean, your, your observation is, yes, we're, we're, there are times where we're actually gelling and there are times where we, we definitely are uh, not communicating or... What's well, hard as hell for us to work with each other at the same time that we're paying attention to the score. I mean, that's really close to impossible. And yet, there were times, for example, when Ben and I played the same motif together in the same tempo. Yeah. And that's not something that's required, but when it happens, it usually kind of calls attention to a communality that would not be so obvious at other times. Um, all right, come through. Okay. Excuse me. Thanks, uh, as always, Ben. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Ben, until next I'm time. Sorry, if, if whenever that'll be. Here. Yeah, whenever that'll be. Uh, I don't know. Does anybody have any observations? I, uh, I think, so it's kind of like learning to drive. You know, you're learning <laughs> how to, to pay attention to what's in front of you, pay attention to your mirrors, pay attention to what's behind you, and to, like, like your that. speed limit. So right now I was I was I was looking ahead of me. I was looking to the side. I was looking. So I was I was kind of hot figuring out what things I need to focus on. But every now and then I'd be able to put a couple things together. And I think what it really seemed to click is when I got the cue from the the score, picked the motif, and then started by listening to what somebody else was doing and then trying to sync up with them, even if we were playing different motifs. Yeah. Or even if we were out yeah, of Well, it's sync. fine if you're playing different motifs, but you're still playing the same tempo. Then yeah. there's the verticality, which is built into it, but which you don't hear very often. But I think it, when I noticed that I was doing that, that that's something I want to shoot for more, is that. there? You know, I heard a lot of really nice parts in it. I don't know how other people felt, but there were times when, for example, something would just really stand out. Like, there would, it would seem like a mush... And then all of a sudden, something would happen, like I remember some Bartok pizzicato coming from you, you know, which obviously, again, it's really easy to do on the guitar, right. and I always find it extremely striking, and I would hear that, and I would go, oh yeah, that's perfect, you know, it's like the, the perfect thing to happen just at that right moment. And again, the prestissimo, I mean, of course, in a way, that's like a cheap thrill, but those prestissimo passages were like... Can we get any more insane here? It's yeah, just, yeah. just so fucking over the top. Yeah. But it but it really works, I think. I mean, I think probably everybody has fun doing that. Yeah. I do at least. I really have fun doing it. The one a couple of things that were missing were that like if it would if it would say something like cadenza or solo or whatever, I was dropping out mm. in most of the instances in the hope that somebody else would would solo, you know, would be featured, but nobody did that. And then there was a time when I tried to take a solo hoping that everybody else would drop out, and people didn't do that right, either. So maybe I don't understand what you mean by that. So well, solo, solo and soli, is that those no, soli is not the same. Soli is when you, when you do the same things okay. together. The string section does the same things together. Right. Solo is basically is a when solo? a person takes a solo, okay. which is something that is somewhat reliant on the other people dropping out for right right okay and then cadenza is basically synonymous with that uh so I, you know i tried it from both perspectives most right. of the time i dropped out hoping that somebody else would come to the forefront but that didn't happen okay. it's okay though i mean considering that we were twice as thick now as we were the last time that we played it mm -hmm. it's to be expected that it's going to be if really over the time my last time to this time i feel like the the notation, I, I was able to follow the mota notation maybe twice as much as last time, and I feel like I still have maybe halfway to go, because that's just, there's so much going by really fast, and obviously some of it we just, well, that's gone, right. moving on. <laughs> uh, but like you say, some of it is, I'm just maybe not emphasizing some of the, you have ones that you're really, really keyed in on, and I'm not, so, I, so I'm building that, I think it's kind of, well, and a lot of what I do is just cheap shots, you know, like if it says fortissimo, 
fuck it, you know, I the motifs go out the window and I just do a tone cluster really loud. Okay. But I think that works. I do have a couple of specific questions. Yeah. Uh, when we're within a date, we pick our motif. Yeah. And then we pick our... The expression marking. The expression marking. Yeah. Are we... I, I And I probably could just read the... the, the, the just. It's well, it's a lot to read and it's a lot to retain. So, you know, are we, ask away. Are we trying to stick with that motif and then maybe change expressions within a date? Or are we trying to, what, what are we shooting for? Like within one date? It, within one date, you're trying to stick to the same motif. Okay. Same if motif. you stop, okay. then hypothetically, and this is something that nobody was, well, I, I tried to do it, but I don't think anybody else did, or at least if they did, I didn't notice it. If you, it, like, for example, if Tronco comes up, right. that means to suddenly cut off. Well, I was abiding by that pretty often partially just taking advantage of it for a rest right. but also so that the texture wouldn't be so dense all the time okay. and uh but that meant that i wouldn't pick up a motif again until a new okay. uh date came along okay. however if you're doing an expression marking that isn't something like the grand pause or the tronco you know where you're cutting it off or the forte piano where you're being loud and then suddenly soft, you know, things like that that are really dramatic effects that might end up in silence. Uh, if you're not doing one of those, then you keep going with okay. your motif. Okay. So, for example, if you do the marcato, you know, then basically what we're doing is playing staccato, you mm -hmm. know, but maybe playing a little bit louder or whatever, right? So you do the marcato and you keep going with the same motif. Okay. Now there are times when it says, for example, the shelving one, where it says play with abandon, yeah. when I just go off and do whatever the fuck I feel like doing. That's playing with abandon. That's what it means to me. I, I forget the motifs, I don't care about the motifs, I'm just playing whatever I want to. And the same thing goes with bravuro. If the motif itself is not conducive to your showing bravuro, which basically none of them are, mm -hmm. then go wild. You know, show how good you are, or whatever. Uh, but then, if you stop, you don't go back to the motif. Okay. You wait. Now, you know, I noticed that Ben, for example, was picking up the same motif or changing to another one right in the midst of a date. Yeah, I did that and a few I, times. I and I really think know. probably most of us did. I tried not to, but okay. I, I don't think I completely succeeded. Mm -hmm. I would frown upon that. But, I mean, what the fuck? It's such a free-for-all once we get into this thing that if you can manage to play anything that you think sounds good to you at all while you're doing it, then that's great. Well, I, I, I agree with you there. Like, it's okay to, to kind of, like, play something that sounds good and, and, and sometimes get off the track. But I think that's an improvement we can make next time and that it's reasonable to expect that we can do that. So, for me personally, like, that shooting for what you were just saying, stick with the motif within the date unless you're stopping... Um, that's that's something I can definitely shoot for uh, as well. So, you know, we're kind of like just push it up and up. That's what I do with It's just so, so much helpful. to keep in mind. So I did try to... fly so fast, too, where it's, you know, sometimes I'm just scrambling. Wait, what was that it just said? It's gone, and then I'm like... Right. I'm and still thinking about it while as I see it. And if you think about it too much, then you've kind of blown it because totally. it's too late to respond, yeah. I think. I mean, that's what I was trying to do this time was not think about it and go, oh, yeah, but that was four seconds ago, you know, by then I feel like it's right. too late. Like there's, and, but I was also trying to do ones that I hadn't done before. So for example, the one that's the bridge where you try to improvise a bridge from one motif to the next. Right. I actually yeah, did that once and pulled it off. It wasn't a very good bridge because there really wasn't much of a, of a melodic continuity between whatever motif I was in the midst of to the yeah. one that I then thought, okay, I'm going to play this other one next. I'm going to try to do this thing in order to connect the two. Yeah. But I at least tried it, and that's one of the things that I need to work on more is more of these things that I don't do. I, I, I'm pretty much on top of the tempo changes. I don't know how everybody feels about that, but yeah, like if, it. if it went... Piumoso, then I sped up a little bit. If it went andante, then I tried to imagine, you know, what it would be like if you were walking, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If it went to lento, that was great because then I could go really slow. Calma is always totally easy. I love it when the snow scenes come up because those are the calma ones. And then I just put the sustain pedal on and, you know, turn it into music for a minute. Jeff, what about you? Do you have any comments? I think that was so... Was 
with such a dense texture, one of the things that we can do is be really aware of the dynamic at which we're playing at because like when it does become fortissimo or when we do have the dying away, a lot of times those get lost. So if we're, you know, think about your entrances like, and try to play a little bit quieter at times instead of everyone playing loudly. Yeah. And then we'll also ping pong the motives across around the room a little bit. Um, it just needs to create like, we need to create more space, I think. Yeah, and I that think also so. means that also means just like taking a break and listening around the ensemble, just not playing at times as yeah. well. Yeah, no, I, I yeah. completely agree with you. And there was, for example, there's the divisi, which is the one where you try to pass something on to someone else. Mm -hmm. I tried to do that yeah. by playing just a short phrase and then looking at Ben, but I think that he didn't notice it was the divisi. Yeah, I mean, I looked at Ben because he's the guy that I played with the most, so we have more of a instant rapport or whatever mm -hmm. nothing personal about anybody else plus he's the person who's right next to me <coughs> but he didn't notice it so yeah. you know it, uh, that, that it's failed it's hard to look up around oh I know. See it yeah. I know I'm staring at the screen wait, wait, making sure I don't miss another date change and well you don't have to change the motif every date but one of the things that's that's of course weirdly frustrating about it all is that sometimes the date changes are just like boom yeah. boom yeah. boom yeah. boom yeah. and then suddenly there will be one that goes like on for really three back. minutes or whatever. So there were ones that I, where I found myself dropping out, either because of the tronco or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, I've got my finger on the next key I want to play. I'm and I'm just staring days. at the screen, waiting for being able to bring up that next motif. Yeah. And now I have I to wait two, three minutes. Yeah. You know? Maybe that's, that's another way to think about the pieces. Instead of, cause right now I think, I feel like we're all just trying to grasp onto it and watch it as it goes by but if right. we think about it as really think about it as these moments these textures and really define what we mean by each of these textures like there's some of those like when the still the held notes that's like a real marker that's a real break there i use you know? i use this the held notes a lot you yeah. probably noticed that but when i was doing the held note thing i was aiming for these synthesizer sounds that were basically held with mm -hmm. just like S subtle modulation to them or whatever which are sounds that I ordinarily avoid because I don't really like them that much because they're kind of synthesizer cliches but for the held note thing I think they work yeah definitely and it provides a, uh, a background texture that the other things can then mm -hmm. distinguish themselves from so if one person's doing the held note and other people are doing other things although one of the things I liked the most was when there were a few instances where more people were doing the held note at the same time. I really, really like yeah. those parts. It's like with everything else, it goes by so fast. If you don't see that it says held note, then you're not gonna do it. When it comes to the percussion parts, um, do you, th those tend to be like uh, almost messy because we're like playing and then the percussion stuff will come up and we have to reach for the instrument. So there's like, there's a real break between it like really cuts into the right. the form, right? Yeah. Right. Do you do you imagine that as do you imagine the percussion parts as being breaks in the form or kind of like continuations of what was happening before with percussion? I mean, I think they're more breaks, really. I okay. mean, they're they're more like sudden changes in gotcha. timbre, which is that's more what I'm aiming for. I feel like we're gonna have a tendency to have the timbre be too muddy. Mm -hmm. And then if you just, if you throw in this percussion thing, like, yeah. I mean, the Chinese gong, for example, really, really works well that way. I think you only, I, I only noticed you play it a couple of times, but, but when you did play it, it just cut through everything and created this whole new feel for what was going on. And then we could go back to the other stuff. Cool. But I mean, whatever we do with it is essentially fine, but that's the way I'm imagining it. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, definitely.